This is Colin O'Keefe for LXBN TV. Did you know that you cannot fire someone for liking something on Facebook? Well, that's what the National Labor Relations Board recently decided in a case involving a Connecticut sports bar. Joining me now to explain the background of the case and its potential impact is attorney Mina Harris. She is based in Washington, D.C. with Covington and Burling, and she is author on the firm's blog, Inside Privacy. Uh, Mina, first off, can you walk us through the facts of this case? Oh, what what exactly happened here, and why did the, the board rule the way that they did? Um, so this was a case where a former employee of a sports bar, as you mentioned, sports bar and restaurant, um, posted a Facebook status criticizing the employer for uh, failing to do her taxes correctly, such that she ended up owing more in um, state income tax than she expected. Um, thereafter, a conversation continued on her um, status update that she initially posted between uh, that former employee and about six other people, including um, customers and also current employees, two of whom are uh, those at issue who are ultimately discharged for their conduct, uh, their social media activity. So um, one of the employees who was fired simply liked uh, the initial status update. Uh, the, the discussion then continued, at which point uh, the second employee who was also fired commented on the status more or less, um, I won't quote because it involves a uh, curse words, but uh, expressing agreement, um, you know, a disapproval that she too owed more taxes than expected. Um, so a few days later, those two employees reported back to work um, and they were discharged on the basis of their social media, act they were told they were discharged on the basis of their social media activity um, and specifically that the employer considered it to be uh, disparaging and defamatory and indicating that the employees were not loyal enough um, to be working for the restaurant. So. The uh, administrative law judge who first heard the case actually in 2012, so it was a you know, two-year period that this ultimately got decided, um, so that judge found that under the National Labor Relations Act, the Facebook conduct um, was concerted activity because it involved current employees and was part of you know, an ongoing sequence of discussion concerning issues that they intended to act upon or um, were preparing to um, organize around for group action. So it was considered you know, collective bargaining um, they, the, the, that's protected under the act. Um, so that issue actually wasn't disputed um, in the uh, national, wasn't disputed when it went up to the NLRB. Um, and the employee actually, I'm sorry, the employer in fact acknowledged that the conduct was, you know, concerted activity and that its employees did in fact have the right uh, to engage in a discussion about the um, employer's uh, tax withholding calculation. So instead, uh, the employer asserted that um, as a result of the activities, uh, they more or less adopted the initial criticism and the initial statement that was written by the former employee. Um, and in doing so, you know, adopting that allegedly disparaging and defamatory comment um, lost the protection of the act. So that was what the employer was arguing um, below. So then the NLRB um, ultimately ruled that even though the employee's uh, activity on Facebook was you know, an expression of agreement with the original complaint that the comments um, still were not uh, so disloyal as to lose the act's protection. Uh, so specifically, uh, the board found that, you know, the com communications um, were seeking to sort of provide mutual support in the workplace environment, encouraging group actions and, uh, and to get basically the employer to, you know, take some sort of action to address the terms um, of their, the conditions of their employment and were actually intended to di disparage the products or, or excuse me, services or you know, in some way undermine the employer's reputation. Um, so in fact, the uh, NLRB pointed to the fact that the comments that issue didn't actually even you know, talk about the products and services at all, uh, much less disparage them. So ultimately it was ruled that uh, it was unlawful to discharge the uh, employees on that basis. I, I would say what's sort of interesting about uh, this case in particular and some of the reporting um, is that it's been suggested the ruling is, is noteworthy because it, it seems to change law and provide some sort of concrete guidance and how the NLRB uh, will approach and analyze, you know, similar cases in the future. But um, I would say that the ruling so far have been um, very fact dependent, you know, looking at the specific comments that are made, the specific circumstances in which they were made, um, that I don't think it's actually fair necessarily to say that they um, have sort of established some identifiable standard that will in the future be kind of universally applied in this context. Um, I, of course, as is with anything in common law, there are other cases that have a very similar set of facts. I think that this would be um, provide some guidance, um, but outside of that, I think that the NLRB is clearly continuing to look at these cases um, on a case-by-case -case basis, and that the substance is not necessarily different from what they've been doing. But um, I don't think that it provides sort of you know concrete guidance. Um, 
uh, in terms of you know like establishing a standard though, um, which again I said, a lot of other reporting has suggested that's that's the case here. Um, one interesting thing that uh, was actually noted in a footnote was that the NL NLRB disagreed with the um, administ administrative law judge's um, decision that uh, to like someone's status update extends basically to the entire stream of comments. So the um, administrative law judge found that the one employee who liked it, it, it went beyond just, you know, I was showing agreement with the initial complaint, but extended to more disparaging comments that followed up until, you know, they, they currently existed at the point in which the judge was looking at um, the case. And the, the NLRB decided that that was not correct and that um, to like the status update only indicated an expression of agreement with that initial comment. So um, I think in that way that, you know, clearly provides some sort of standard of, um, how the, the court will, or sorry, the board will evaluate sort of a general uh, behavior, which is to like a status update on Facebook and what that um, really means. I see. Yeah, it is a, a really interesting suit because, as you mentioned, the NLRB does really uh, look at these the, these things on a case by case basis. But with that in mind, uh, are there any takeaways, any lessons for companies when it comes to policing social media and the types of things uh, that they should avoid or be careful with, so that they don't end up being uh, one of these cases that the NLRB has to take a look at? Right. I think um, in terms of lessons, uh, takeaways here, I think. Um, and the question of, you know, sort of whether an employer should avoid policing social media accounts in this way, I think uh, it would definitely be dangerous for an employer to sort of turn a blind eye to all employee um, social media behavior because um, certainly, for example, the uh, Federal Trade Commission has indicated that it will be pretty aggressive in enforcing advertisement disclosure um, and endorsement rules. So in that way, employers should and can, um, can and should uh, restrict employees' uh, social media marketing, right? So that's a situation in which an employer would actually want to be monitoring that sort of behavior. Um, the difference is that when, when the content and social media posts involve work conditions like wages, hours, safety, and employer um, behavior, uh, they should probably take a hands-off approach, um, as you know was demonstrated in this case. Of course, that's not always a clear line, but I think, um, and it is you know very fact-dependent, as we saw here, but um, I think that would be sort of the general takeaway from this case. Definitely. I think it makes sense for employers like, like the NLRB itself to really uh, look at these incidents on a case-by-case on -case basis and, and really be careful and avoid uh, handing out some of these, these blanket policies that could potentially land them in some trouble. Uh, once again, that was Mina Harris of Covington and Burling. For more of her insight on this case and others in the privacy realm, be sure to visit InsidePrivacy.com. Thank you for joining me today, Mina. Thank you.